cataloging video after video, now that's a job, you must be a Virgo or something, but I know you aren't, of UFOs over Lake Erie. What makes these different is that most of the sightings in this phenomena consist almost entirely of pulsating orbs of light, like we saw thousands of at our conference up at Mount Shasta when Chief took his father's hide, literally. Unusual lights are seen changing colors, converging, I wanna go watch that dance, and separating over the lake. Stories of the unexplained phenomenon date back 150 years to the indigenous North American Indian tribes there. So this hasn't just started yesterday, as you all well know, but we're gonna hear much, much more about that, and we're very honored. Stand up and welcome Michael Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an event, huh? First of all, I want to thank Chief Golden Light Eagle for uh, inviting me here, which was quite an honor. Um, yeah, I live very close to Lake Erie and uh, probably two football fields lengths away. And uh, back in 2005, uh, well, I've had contact my whole life, but in earnest, this, this phenomenon started. And uh, me and a friend were out after band practice and we we're in my backyard and Right, right at the shoreline of the lake was this huge craft, and we both seen it, and we, about 10 minutes, we just were in awe. And that sparked my curiosity. I had a camcorder, but I really wasn't using it for anything. I, th I thought, you know, I'm gonna find some beaches on the lake, and I'm gonna start going down around sunset. And I would have a camera on a tripod, and if a big orb of light would fly by, I was ready to film it. And um, so I started doing that and started accumulating quite a library of footage. And uh, some of those clips started to go viral on YouTube and it got to the point where my YouTube channel now has about four million views. And uh, that brought the attention of the History Channel. So pretty much uh, more than anything, probably people recognized me from being on the UFO Hunters, even though I had short hair then, so maybe people don't recognize me. Um, it was the episode Alien Contact out of, uh, out of episode season one. Um, and it was interesting because Bill Burns, who is the host of UFO Hunters, he just released a book called UFO Hunters the Book. And it had every chapter is one of the episodes. For the first time, I got to find out that it was uh, my episode that actually got the series renewed for a second season. So I thought that was fascinating because I didn't know what they thought of it. But um, what had happened was, unbeknownst to me, they had interviewed this other guy. His name was Terrell Copeland. And he was in Washington, and he was a Marine. And they were going to send him overseas, and they... Uh, ended up doing some medical testing on him and figured out that he didn't have normal human blood. And uh, so they dismissed him, honorary discharge, out of the military because none of the military doctors could figure out why he had this blood anomaly. So the History Channel thought, well, this is interesting that these two guys that are 500 miles apart have the exact same orbs of light filmed, have the same story of contact, same spiritual message given to us, which was become responsible for your own mental, mental energy, you know? Uh, think about what you're thinking about and choose the highest possible. But the thing is, they thought, well, wouldn't it be weird if this other guy ended up with the same blood anomaly? So they flew us both to Boston and had our blood work done by a Harvard professor. His name was David Sistrom. And that's when they revealed to me and the world that, yes, indeed, you have the same blood anomaly. Um, and then they sent me home on a plane. It didn't. Uh, didn't even explain it. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. This is, this is my life, just not a TV show, you know? And uh, they said, well, we really don't know what to tell you because um, we truly don't know. So that's how I found out about it. But this led, this is in, the, in early 2008. In the summer of 2008, I was at a festival and I was approached by people who said, Michael, we've been known in the past as the Anunnaki. And at this time, there was no ancient aliens on TV. I had never read a Zachariah Sitchin book. I didn't know what an Anunnaki was, you know. Um, they said, we want to tell you what this bloodline issue is about of what the History Channel just revealed. And they said, actually, it's the Nephilim bloodline of the Bible where it talks about the Elohim and the human hybrid was called the Nephilim. And uh, they told me, it's really interesting how, uh, how this all ties into who the mound builders even actually was. 
um, because what I'm finding out now, and it's so recent, I just found out a lot of this um, last week, actually. Um, because of my contact with these beings, I started getting contacted by some insider groups, and uh, they told me, you know, there's a vortex right in that area where you're filming this stuff. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's strange, because I know that these beings knew where these vortexes of ley line energy were. And I was like, well, where's the pyramid? You know, there's nothing in my hometown. So here, sure enough, I find out there was a mound right up the hill from me, and it was one of the largest complexes for the mound builders that even was. That was their home base in East Lake, Ohio. And this mound uh, structures there, they had 665 foot long mounds that were 25 feet high all the way around this pyramidal structures and pyramids that dwarfed the ones in Chichen Itza. And uh, so just last week, I was contacted by the East Lake Historical Society. So I go into their facility, and right on the wall, I see a newspaper article, and it says the mound builders were first in East Lake. I went, ah, okay, <laughs> you know, pieces of the puzzle are coming together here because when I started seeing all this footage, which I'm going to share with you some of my best footage and some of the media that the, the subject has been getting in my hometown, you know, right there was, I found two newspaper articles from the 1800s from Cleveland newspapers that were saying that these people were seeing, they called them wizard lights back then out over the lake, and they think maybe it was a mirage of a ship that was on fire, and for some reason it looked like it was floating above the lake. They'd send out rescue crews to see if they could help, and there's no boat, there's no fire, you know, no uh, damaged boats or anything. And uh, so when you read the descriptions from the 1800 newspaper articles, you can see they're describing these exact same orbs of light that are being seen to this day. What I want to tell you um, before we get into the video and let you see that is because of my own research into this, I've been contacted by, I don't know if any of you know about the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, and it's owned by Bigelow Aerospace. Bigelow is owned by Robert Bigelow, who is a multi-billionaire, and he does high-tech uh, space station modules. And he's also in charge of looking into new propulsion systems for the powers that be. And uh, so I got contacted by an investigator from Bigelow. And he said, you know, we know that what you're filming over Lake Erie is the real deal because it's exactly what we've been studying over the Skinwalker Ranch for 20 years now. You know, he bought this ranch because it had all this paranormal and UFO activity. And the ranch was put up for sale because the, the family that lived there just had been fed up with it. And they're like, we're moving. So he bought the place and staffed it with the best equipment money could buy and best scientists in the world. And they lived on site. And he said, we know that this is the same phenomenon. And, but what you need to know is why that place was called the Skinwalker Ranch was because of the indigenous Indians would see these orbs of light come down and they would take on physical form. They would turn into giant wolves that they said were totally domesticated. It was like the most kind, peaceful wolf you'd ever want to run into. They showed no aggression. And they were the size of small horses, they said. And simultaneously, this investigator from Bigelow, his name was Gary Hernandez, he pointed me into the right direction of the UK Ministry of Defense, had uh, declassified a bunch of their documents. But you know what? If if they just dump 30,000 documents onto the internet, it's pretty hard to find the right stuff. Well, this guy showed me, look at this document. And here, sure enough, the UK Ministry of Defense said, the real deal are these orbs of light, plasma manifestations. And actually, they're showing up worldwide right now. They're showing up over the UK Ministry, of, you know, the UK area, over Mexico, Phoenix, uh, Texas, uh, it's all the exact same phenomenon, and this, you know, th this phenomenon is getting a lot of attention in the media, but they act like they're isolated events, and they have nothing to do with one another. When, when you see the footage of these news clips from around the world, it's the exact same orbs of light. They're flying in the same, making constellations in the sky, and it's the same, you know. But interestingly, the UK Ministry of Defense said, three of these orbs of light can come together and in some process that we don't understand create one physical triangle craft that accounts for these huge triangular craft that are being seen worldwide. So 
wrap your head around that for a minute, that this intelligence behind these orbs of light can become anything physical, either biological or technological. And this isn't my opinion. This is Bigelow Aerospace and the UK Ministry of Defense who has released this information. I can tell you, because people go, well, what do they look like? And I'm like, well, they can probably look like anything they want to look like, because if they have that kind of control over physical manifestation, you know, and I can tell you, that's something we haven't asked, what's it like to meet a multidimensional being, you know? It's not what you think. They can communicate through synchronicity and through uh, divine coincidence, you know, and to leading you into uh, what they want you to know. And um, so it, it grew to the point that I've met them now face-to-face, -face, or faceless as it turned out. They didn't have faces. I, I could see up through their neck. And right when I got here, it looked like their faces were covered with like a smoke or almost like a, a shadow that wherever they moved. And I said, can I see your real faces? He said, no, you'll have to wait till tomorrow to see our real faces. I thought that was interesting. I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> so actually I did and uh, spent the whole weekend with these people. And that was just the first meeting. And that was in 2008. But what I've brought with you today is uh, some of the best media clips that shows what's happening in this area. And just remember, this is the same location as the first location of the mound builders, which is mind-blowing to me, you know. And um, the activity in this area, like I said, has been tracked down back into the 1800s. And because of my contacts within the government now that are looking into the subject of extraterrestrial things, this gentleman said, Michael, you know what's underneath you there in that area? I said, no, not really. He said, it's the largest underground base in the world, and it's not ours. So there's a lot happening here, and uh, without further ado, I think I'm going to have him start the video. And uh, first of all is going to be the media, and then after that is my own personal footage that it really hasn't been seen. They've showed some of it on the History Channel and whatnot, but uh, this footage is uh, some, some good stuff, so I'm really happy to be able to share it with you. But just so you know, I'm doing a couple workshops, and in the workshops, I'm not going to be showing any videos or anything. I'm just going to be going into very in-depth into what I've learned from these beings and spiritually and whatnot. So if you want to get a little bit more in-depth into this subject, please come to one of my workshops, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. I might talk a little bit. This is really impressive simply because of the size of Lake Erie and the fact that it's a no-fly zone. There's nothing around for something like 60 miles. It really makes these lights that Michael Lee Hill is videotaping very remarkable. But are these objects new, or have they been seen before? March 4th, 1988. According to the Cleveland Plain dealer, Sheila Baker sees several small triangular objects shooting out of a huge metallic gray football-shaped object descending over Lake Erie. The U.S. Coast Guard even witnesses this event and makes a written report. Quote, the smaller objects began hovering in the area where the large object landed. They appeared to be scouting the area. They were never able to fully resolve this event. The description of these objects approaching the lake is eerily similar is there any to chance Michael's you could footage dim the lights? from August 18th, 2006. If possible. But Michael's encounters go further back than the team realizes. Uh All right, are there really UFOs? Better yet, are they flying over Lake Erie? And East Lake Man claims there are, and he has the tapes to prove it. 19 Action News anchor Lena Lai, live in the Newsflex with the story, New at 11. <laughs> yes, Denise, you might remember the last time we tried to broadcast some of Michael Lee Hill's UFO video, our computer system crashed. Coincidence? There's a whole other story Tonight, barring that. any alien interruptions, here's Hill's latest home video that may make a believer out of you. What in the world is this, or should we say out of this world, a pulsating orb of light hovering over Lake Erie near the East Lake Shore? <laughs> Michael Lee My Hill behind the camera. The UFO researcher says without a doubt what you're seeing are 
extraterrestrials? No doubt about no it. No doubt about it. One shot on this. The video shot last fall just put on YouTube and already has gotten more than 660,000 hits. People want the, want the truth. I think we're ready and... Uh, it just doesn't really go along with our government's plans. There's something strange in the neighborhood. When 19 Action News tried to show you previous footage two years ago, Hill finds the technical snafus no coincidence. Something spooky going on with that tape. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why don't these aliens just show up for everyone to see? Go ahead, park your spaceship right in front of our 19 Action News studios here, and I will personally hand any little green man this microphone. Seriously, enough with the appearances on home video shot by a select few. Hill has an answer for that. We couldn't have the outcome that I believe they intend, which is for us to become a galactic society and a peaceful society. The way he sees it, the alien appearances are as beautiful as they are peaceful. And a sudden visit would be as traumatic to us as 9-11, like a terrorist attack. But he says time will reveal all truth. They will. They will. Ooh, and no computer glitches. Hill says the same orbs have been spotted in London, Mexico, Canada, California, and Texas. His recent findings will be a part of a History Channel special on UFO hunters set to air next month. Live in the Newsplex, Lena Bly, 19 Action News. Beam me up, Lena. <laughs> Yesterday in this hour, we told you about the mysterious lights that keep appearing over Lake Erie near Cleveland. Here is some home video of the lights that neighbors in the area say are unlike aircraft or helicopters that fly there. And last night, for the eighth night in a row, they said these lights were back, appearing around 7.30 p.m. and lasting about two hours. NASA has a lab in Cleveland called the Glenn Research Center. They test rockets and various aircraft, but say they haven't done any testing this week. A Pentagon official told me the U.S military has not been testing anything recently in that area and the FAA acknowledges the light pattern seems different from commercial flight paths in the area so what on earth is going on joining us is UFO expert Nick Pope from our London Bureau Nick ran the British government's UFO project at the Ministry of Defense Nick first of all what do you make of uh, what we're all hearing from Cleveland eight days the lights seem to be similar but they look unlike anything that people have ever seen Yes, it certainly seems to be an interesting wave of sightings and it's always fascinating when you get um, activity like this over a period of different nights. I think my key question would be, and it's really a question for the, uh, the Air Force and the FAA, has anyone checked the radar tapes to see if anything unusual was tracked? Well, as a matter of fact, I spoke to officials at the FAA today. They checked in with uh, Cleveland Air Traffic Control, and they don't have anything unusual, nothing unusual on the radar, no unusual reporting from any pilots. Um, is it possible that maybe this is some sort of a helicopter or rescue service from one of the Cleveland hospitals that people east of the city are, are looking at a little bit differently? I wouldn't have thought so, and I've seen some of this footage myself, and what uh, struck me about it was the way that it appeared to change color at some stage, uh, and that's quite interesting. I mean, I think as ever, one would need to get hold of the original camera, the original film footage, and do some proper uh, forensic analysis to get to the bottom of it, but it's, it's certainly interesting, and as I say, the fact that it's, it's come back over several nights and been seen by many different people um, is, is makes it quite a significant sighting. Well, and as far as the analysis of the film, well, we intend to do uh, just that, and it's now several people. We're being told that because this has been happening night after night, people are now gathered on the beaches along Lake Erie near Euclid, Ohio, where this the kid first saw it. And apparently, again, as you, uh, for eight nights in a row, it happens about each night between 7 and 7.30 in the evening. The lights stay up for about two hours. Sometimes they dim. Sometimes they get brighter. Sometimes they move up. They move to one side, and then they eventually disappear. What do you make of it all? Well, I, I, most UFO sightings do turn out to have conventional explanations. They can be uh, lasers, searchlights, uh, fireworks, the uh, uh, Chinese lanterns, which are quite popular, and people let these off at parties and barbecues and things like that. But I think what is interesting is, is that these days, of course, almost everyone has a cell phone with the capability to take photos and videos. So out of the tens of thousands of people who see UFOs each year, we're getting more 
more and more of this interesting footage. So we're more likely to get to the bottom of these sorts of mysteries. Well, we certainly hope to get to the bottom of this one. Nick Pope uh, from London, thank you so much, Nick. We will keep you posted on, uh, on how things go over here. We appreciate it. And mysteries like this are challenging. And it's really, really fun to contemplate uh, that, uh, you know, there, there may be beings out there who are concerned about our planet and who may give us the opportunity to advance ourselves. It's, it's really fun to contemplate. All the physics that we know on this planet, quantum physics uh, and, uh, and conventional physics and, and metallurgy and, and uh, you know, you know, all of it, it can, it can really encompass a theory of how these ships move. I mean, you've, you've done it yourself, David, uh, proposing, you know, that when, if you can convert, you know, a mass to a, a state of... En el estado de Ohio, en el Midwest de los Estados Unidos, se encuentra el lago Erie, uno de los grandes lagos. Ahí recientemente, en los últimos meses, se han venido grabando imágenes notables, extraordinarias de lo que parecen ser objetos inteligentes. En el mes de mayo pasado se grabó nuevamente un video extraordinario que le vamos a presentar aquí. Evidentemente que estos objetos no pueden ser aviones y entonces ¿qué son? La historia con Carlos Clemente. La oleada ovni que se ha estado generando en el lago Erie en los Estados Unidos desde el año 2001 ha llamado la atención. Ha recibido una amplia cobertura por parte de los medios de comunicación que después de cada avistamiento importante presentan las imágenes a la opinión pública. Have you seen the mysterious lights over Lake Erie? Many people suspect they could be signals from space. Jen Pichano explains those sightings and one theory about their origin. What do you see when you watch this home video? What's this coming up to it, man? No way. I got this on tape, man. It was taken on a Lake Erie spring night. I go outside and I look up in the sky and I see them up there. Every so often you see strange lights blinking on and off. It's not hard to find people who believe the lake shore is a hotbed for extraterrestrial activity. Last year, in fact, Fox 8 revealed these images of similar lights over the lake. Now, it goes without saying, but of course, we'll say it anyway. NASA, the military, no one will comment on any of this. But we do know planes are always landing and taking off at Hopkins and, of course, on the other side of the lake in Canada. Michael Lee Hill says none of that matters. We'll know more soon enough when they decide to reveal themselves. Mark Zinni. Foxy. I live the news flex with the story. New at 11. <laughs> yes, Denise, you might remember the last time we tried to broadcast some of Michael Lee Hill's UFO video, our computer system crashed. Coincidence? Tonight, barring any alien interruptions, here's Hill's latest home video that may make a believer out of you. What in the world is this, or should we say out of this world, a pulsating orb of light hovering over Lake Erie near the East Lake Shore? <laughs> Michael Lee Hill behind the camera. The UFO researcher says without a doubt what you're seeing are extraterrestrials. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. The video shot last fall just put on YouTube and already has gotten more than 660,000 hits. Debido a la extensa difusión de noticias acerca de las observaciones que son constantes en el área del lago, grupos de personas están acampando a las orillas para poder ser testigos de la aparición de estos objetos misteriosos. Los expertos han analizado las evidencias y consultaron con personal de la torre de control del aeropuerto, pero hasta el momento no ha habido ninguna respuesta acerca de lo que ha estado ocurriendo. Incluso hay quienes piensan que existe una base extraterrestre en el lago y otros solo se limitan a decir que es un punto caliente para ver ovnis. La historia del lago tiene al menos 150 años de sucesos extraños. Su nombre es de una tribu norteamericana llamados los Erieloxnan o personas con cola larga. Las anécdotas datan de la guerra civil entre los años 1861 y 1865, en donde la gente advertía a los forasteros acerca de las luces del lago. Desde el año 2004, un grupo de investigación de la ciudad de Cleveland ha documentado por lo menos 40 avistamientos de importancia desde el noroeste de Ohio y el área de playas del lago Erie. En el 2010 la cantidad de reportes se incrementa de manera notable. El reportero 
David Schuster de la NBC presentó un reporte donde la NASA y la milicia argumentaron no saber el origen de estas misteriosas luces. NASA has a lab in Cleveland called the Glenn Research Center. They test rockets and various aircraft, but say they haven't done any testing this week. A Pentagon official told me the U.S. military has not been testing anything recently in that area. And the FAA acknowledges the light pattern seems different from commercial flight paths in the area. Las evidencias son claras y al parecer algo está ocurriendo, ya que desde hace tiempo en este sitio de los Estados Unidos se han estado presentando estos misteriosos objetos. Le acabamos de mostrar las evidencias del lago Erie en los Estados Unidos, un lugar en donde los ovnis se han estado viendo desde el 2010 y ahora en el 2011 hay nuevas evidencias. Nosotros continuaremos a la expectativa y le mostraremos aquí más de estas evidencias. It does make you wonder, Paul. They really do, particularly if you're on the fence about this kind of thing. Uh, these are not typical lights you see in the sky. They're not shooting stars. They're not from any type of aircraft that we know of. Listen to what this area's top UFO guy thinks about it. You can see the houses down here, which is fascinating. UFO enthusiast Michael Lee Hill says video recently posted on YouTube that shows strange lights over Lake Erie is some of the best UFO video he's ever seen. Look at there's another one. The video was shot September 18th. In it, a number of bright lights are seen on the horizon, and they don't appear to be typical aircraft lights. One of the things that I like about this video is you can see the houses, and you can see exactly how high these things are above the houses, which also gives you a little bit of idea of how big these objects are. It's not a little light up there. These are huge balls of light. And they're commentary. There's multiple witnesses. There's at least four or five people talking there. They're all freaking out going, I've never seen anything like this. They're being invaded. Hill says the recent Lake Erie lights are very similar to mysterious lights that appeared over Phoenix in March of 1997. This sighting became one of the most talked about UFO events in decades. It's the exact same. They're showing up over uh, Phoenix, over Texas recently, um, China, um, the UK. Hill claims he's personally witnessed hundreds of UFOs. But before you write him off as a crackpot, listen to his take on the mystery plume in the sky over the Pacific this week. That looked like something military from our end. Um, I, I just, I didn't get the feel of uh, something higher. But Hill believes the latest mystery lights over Lake Erie are from a higher power, a benevolent entity that for some reason is making more frequent visits to our area. Michael Lee has uh, appeared on the History Channel and done tons of research on UFO sightings. Could these lights have been flares dropped from planes, which some say explains the Phoenix phenomenon? Well, flares fall from the sky, and these did not, as you saw. So the mystery continues. Live in the Newsplex, Paul Johnson, 19X. So this, for the first time, is my actual real footage in its entirety for most of it that uh, it has never been seen before. And I will apologize for my language. <laughs> I get excited, and I forget that it's actually recording what I'm saying. <laughs> stopping right into it it's hovering dude this ain't even right those are so bright oh my god the video doesn't even do it much justice dude, but you can see tape. it's beautiful what the hell <laughs> that's the craziest thing ever I'm... <laughs> whoa some people have said this sounds like Cheech and, Ch Cheech and Chong's excellent UFO adventure. Dude, it's beautiful. Oh, I got it. I'm filming it, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, dude. Yeah. This is me going in the night shot, infrared, so you can get a lay of the land and see a little bit better what's going on. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. Dude, you just saw something amazing. This one's coming closer over here, man. Yeah, man. I got 
got it. Look at dude, dude, dude. I don't know, man. There is NASA out in the as well. I don't know what it is, really. I've seen when I saw Louis Mrs. But look how fast it's going. You see that? Yeah, it took off in a jiffy. Dude. This is some of my favorite footage. Holy oh, crap. I was trying to see if I could get it out of the night shot mode, so I went back. So that just blows my mind. I, one showed up and did a loop around the other one and backed up. You know, what, what can do that? The sound of Lake Erie is relaxing, ain't it? I always like when it's not really dark yet. If I can get footage then, I'm really excited. And this day, first of all, you can see all the chemtrails that were back there. And it was actually beautiful. I know that's a weird say, thing to say about well, it, but it did really make it look bright. like a Da Vinci backdrop. And then these orbs just started showing up. I was just filming the chemtrails. I'm like, this is interesting. Wow. I could tell you, people are like, how come it looks like a ball of light? It is a ball of light. <laughs> you know? I got a pair of really nice Nikon binoculars, and it looks like a ball of light. <laughs> like, that's not a saucer. I'm like, well, it probably can become a saucer if it wanted to. What I've heard is these are actually higher dimensional beings that have ignited their Merkaba fields. I don't know if... You know, maybe some people don't know what the Merkaba is, but oh, we all have auras around our bodies. And in certain meditation and visualization techniques, you can get oh, those man, energy fields like spinning down. in a very specific way, and it ignites into a multidimensional travel vehicle. And uh, from what I've learned from them, like, it actually confirms what the UK Ministry of Defense said. It said uh, one person one. that's ignited their Merkaba field will be three feet above their head and three feet below their feet. So if you're six feet, you're gonna have like 11, 12 foot sphere of light. Three of them can come together and because of the increased sacred geometry that is there, they can in a process create a 50 foot sphere of light with three of the beings inside of it. Then three of those, so nine beings, can come together and create the huge triangular craft and they said, that's so, nine of them in service can create a craft that then thousands of them can use and come and check it out. And then when they go back to the mothership, the nine that created it undo it, and then they walk away, and the craft doesn't even exist in the physical anymore.
He said there's not many humans that could sit in one of those seats of the three because they said, say you're going from here to Andromeda and you're flying through space and one person goes, oh crap, we're going really fast. The whole thing would just disintegrate and it wouldn't end well for any of them. But he said, we're, more and more of us are getting closer and closer. But all this footage right here was the exact same night. And you know, sometimes they're a little bit further away, sometimes they're closer, but I would say at least 40, 50 ships came in this one single night that I was filming this stuff that, with the chemtrails that were back there. That's the thing too, you'll see on here, and some of this footage, I'll be filming one and then another one will just show up out of nowhere, um, which is pretty cool. Oh my god, there's two of them. interesting thing too is you'll see the footage come up but I've, I've actually captured them going in and out of the lake which is interesting Oh, sure. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, you'll see some footage. I was out on a friend's sailboat, and it's coming up here. And as I was filming one or orb of light, another one comes up out of the lake and ignites into a big ball of light. And then as that one flies away, the one that I was originally filming gets lower and lower, and then you can see its reflection on the lake, and then it's just gone. That's coming up. See how that one just disappeared too. A lot of the times, sometimes they're there for 10 seconds, sometimes they're there for 10 minutes. About the longest I've ever seen one hang out was about 25 minutes. One of the craziest times though, I didn't get these on uh, tape, but uh, one showed up about 40 feet over my head. I had already filled up two hours of tape and I was just sitting there, you know, enjoying the night and about 40 feet over my head, it just, it, about the size of a small uh, hot air balloon. And this was really cool. This was right on the edge, and you could see it reflecting on the lake, and then it would just shut off and come back. And that's some of my favorite footage, too. I, it's hard to explain. That is so bright when you see it with your naked eye out there. It's awe-inspiring. Video is hard to do it justice, but that's pretty good. One of the other strangest things that I didn't get on film was one came in within swimming distance and it was about 30 feet over the lake and it just hovered there for about 15 minutes and pulsated. This is the sailboat. So you can see there's an orb. We're pretty close to it. And uh, right down to the left, you'll see another one come up out of the lake. Sorry, the, the sailboat was rocking. So. See, right now it's coming up out of the lake on the very left-hand side, and it's going to illuminate.
What's interesting about these is, if you recall with the Dan Aykroyd clip, he had the Mexico Department of Defense had released some UFO footage, and it's made a, a big splash in the UFO community because it's the first time an actual government has released something like that, and it was from one of their military planes. They showed that footage, and it's the exact same thing that's over Lake Erie here, and these double orbs of light, single orbs of light. But here's the first one that I was originally filming. It's so lo low down to the lake now. You can see it's reflecting on the lake. And then it just disappears. It was funny because the people that were on the boat, they, they're not into UFOs or anything. And afterwards, she's like, honey, what was that? He's like, hell if I know. <laughs> This is my latest footage that I've filmed. It was, uh, uh, I think, I believe it's 2013. But this is great because see the other one that just showed up out of nowhere there on the left. So as I started filming this, the one on the left starts moving closer uh, to the one on the right, and it was cool because there's, as I said, more and more people have been down at the lake, and there was a couple people that were witnessing this with us, and. Uh, Matter of fact, uh, could, is the sound, could you turn the sound up on this? When we were back down the pier, once all the ships and stuff left and did the blast out of our atmosphere, mm -hmm. that, uh, I believe it was the Coast Guard. He came close by searching the area and stuff, but it was too late. It was gone already. Oh, he had shit. his lights and everything. Microphone and all that. I'm like, you late. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Me and my friend just sitting there laughing. He was just like, you late, dude. He came by like 15 late minutes. Late to the party, later. man. <laughs> 15 minutes later, he came by. I was like, you way late. They could have like scanned the whole lake by the time he yeah. got here and left. I got both of those in frame right now. They just sitting there, too. Yeah, they are. They're not in here. I got them to the very edges of the frame, and they're not even moving. should leave the frame just like that and watch it start moving. Yep. The left one is moving a little bit now to the right and back. Mm -hmm. This is over there, that close? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's got to look crazy in there. I mean, there's color and stuff when you see it in... You know, you just in the view, yeah, it'll be really nice color. Oh. Wow. This is some of my favorite stuff move. right here, too. Ooh, there's there's another check that one. out. The there's a third one. one. It's a red one, too. Yeah, man. Holy shit. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Wow. Too bad. My camera don't zoom that far. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> Holy nice. shit. Uh, so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> There's three. Yeah. I try to keep quiet. Yeah. I swear I do. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Unbelievable. Thank you. That is mind blowing, man. What's your name? Sean. Sean. Sean's here to witness this with us. <laughs> I've met some interesting guys? folk My down at the lake. Justin. There's one down at the bottom of the lake now. <laughs> Holy shit, check this out. That is a lot. I've never caught for it. Oh time. my god. So mind you, first of all, there's just one ball of light, right? Now there's four. Three of those came out of nowhere, and it's captured on film, so I thought that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, that's what I brought with me. I just whittled down a little bit. I have hours of this, and it actually kind of gets boring after a while sitting there watching a ball of light. But I hope you can feel the vibration of these things. And uh, I think that's going to do it for my time, I do believe. All righty. Great. Well, 
what had happened is after the History Channel and the blood work that they did, I was met by the Anunnaki in the middle of 2008, and they said, we've heard that you've been filming us over Lake Erie. So that was right, you know, from their mouths, so to speak. Um, I've heard that a lot of higher races use this exact same spiritual light technology to travel. So just because you see an orb of light, it probably doesn't mean it's all Anunnaki, but they said that the Anunnaki are the beings who are most intertwined in Earth history. And so because of that fact, if you see orbs of light probably eight out of ten times, it is going to be an Anunnaki or Elohim, if you are seraphim. There's many names for these beings, and actually, you know, that's the whole thing we can get into the workshop of why some of these labels have a lot of negative connotations, and other, you know, but they're the exact same beings. And uh, they've given me some information on why that is so, and uh, we can get into that. Um, but I believe they're the Anunnaki, and from many, many reasons why. Uh, they, they visited me. I didn't visit them. <laughs> well, yeah. they, uh, every time it's happened, it's because they initiated contact with me. And every time that I do meet them, I'll, I'll give you one example. As I said, when I, when I walked in, this was in a gazebo-type uh, structure where this meeting first happened. I'm not talking channeling or anything. It was like me talking to you, you know, and they're sitting in front of me. And as I said, they were faceless. Um, so now fast forward uh, probably a few years, and I'm, in, I'm with a friend that I've known this guy for a long time. And... Uh, and we're in his hot tub, and his wife had got out, and uh, my fiance, and they were in the house, and me and him were talking, and all of a sudden, the conversation just got really enlightened, and this guy, we never really even talked on that level, and half-jokingly, I said, dude, you know you're not from around here, right? He goes, Michael, look at my face and tell me what you see, and I looked, and his face had disappeared, and I said, wow, you look just like the person I met in New York. He said, bingo, nice to talk to you again. And uh, at that point, I was really, I was kind of scared, you know. And I said, who are you? And he said, I am the muse. I inspire creativity, wit, and humor in the human race. And he said, would you like to see a film that I inspired? Oh, okay, <laughs> you know. So we got out of the hot tub, and he goes in, and I, they do this to people, so if you try to explain it, you sound really insane. But he put on this movie, and it was called Bat Thumb. And it was this guy, it was a comedy, and he had redid all these famous movies like Titanic and The Godfather and Star Wars. But instead of Star Wars, it was Thumb Wars. And the whole movie was redone with a face that had been superimposed over a thumb, two eyeballs and a mouth. And it's really, like, freaky and funny. <laughs> but Bat Thumb is what he puts in. And Bat Thumb is going through, and he meets his arch nemesis, and it's a thumb that had a hood over his thumb. And he's like, who are you? And he pulls off the thumb, and he didn't have a face. And he said, I am no face. And he looked, the guy in the room looked at me and kind of blinked. And I was like, oh, my God. I never told him the, the faceless part. You see what I'm saying? I, I just said, you look like the person I met in New York. I never mentioned that he didn't have a face. So uh, that's their calling card to me is when they come through, first of all, that's a strange thing that this intelligence came through two different human vessels. So that's an interesting point in itself. But uh, every time I meet them now, they'll be like, oh, you don't have a face. Oh, nice to see you again, <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, yeah, yes. Well, I'll tell you what happened is uh, because of me meeting these people and being contacted by the secret factions of the NSA, uh, they had put together a team of us hybrids for real. There were six of us Nephilim, and uh, we were working very hard with people that weren't from here trying to help humanity through the 2012 shift because it was prophesied that we had a doom and gloom ending coming, and uh, so a lot of hard work was done, and it dealt with um, this faction of the NSA is the ones that taught remote viewing and how to send your consciousness elsewhere, and they taught us how to 
go to a non-physical platform, they called us, and taught us how to recognize each other's energetic signatures. And then it went to where we would contact with the incoming, Nibiru, and they would make sure that they got what they called a handshake, that we were in communication. And then we went into deep meditation, and it was combined effort that me, like there were six people, which was three teams of two people in this team. And uh, what would we do is me and my partner, which was in California, by the way, those six points, picture a Merkaba that had been superimposed over the United States. Each one of us was in one of those corners of the pyramid. And me and my partner would get together through Skype, and I had a metronome, and we would synchronize our meditation and breathe together and synchronize. And you know the whole idea, if two or more come together with an intent, it's magnified. And uh, we weren't the only team that was doing this, and we were asking for their help for humanity to get through this time period. So the reason I'm telling you this is that at this period, I had worked with Spike TV for six months, and uh, this gets to the disclosure. Um, and actually, for Spike TV, I was really disappointed because I allowed them pretty much to torture me. Uh, they regressed me, and I ended up with uh, traumatic stress syndrome for a while. Uh, make a long story short, they called me into a meeting and said, the reason disclosure hasn't happened is the powers that be didn't trust humanity with unlimited free energy. They said, I know it sounds great that unlimited free energy would be great, right? But they said, what do you think that the people who are mis misabusing their brothers and sisters in Middle Eastern countries that are killing women and children for absolute, there's never a reason. But they said, what do you think that they're going to do with their unlimited free energy? Probably nothing good, right? And I thought, wow, I never even thought of that. So my response to these group of people that I was brought into this meeting, I said, well, we're all in agreements that there's higher sources here. How about we don't talk about it? Let's talk to them, people who have got through this phase of evolution and learned how to love each other and probably a million years ago got through this phase. Let's have a talk with them. So that's, I hope that's where disclosure, but there's no way around this. They said, even the Anunnaki, when I met them, they said the age of Aquarius, everything's going to change with how... Uh, disclosure, and we will be going into a golden age. They said, mankind, they told me we've earned the right to be treated as equals. I think it's going to happen way sooner. It's going to be a, a, a dominoes fall, and when it happens, the Templars are going to resurface, because the Templars are the ones that truly knew about the bloodline and who they were, and uh, they haven't went anywhere, and from what I understand, you know, they have, they have the funds to free humanity. They have more gold in their possession that's been mined by the rest of humanity throughout all of our history. And they know what's up, the Knights Templar and the Priory of Sion. So pretty much that's what I heard. If you want to look at team good cop, bad cop, Vatican, bad cop. <laughs> uh, Templars, good cop. So um, any more questions? Or I they told me way back way back that when we seen our economic system about ready to crumble that would be the sign that we are right now that uh and back then and by the way <laughs> before the first obama uh election they told me too that it would it would be revealed that he is not eligible to be president i didn't know what that meant this was before the election and they said actually though it's, it's weird that's a whole nother subject but um it's in play for disclosure that when it's revealed that he's not eligible to be president there's already a legal way for people who care to come to the surface. And it'll be a joint effort of them, the Anunnaki, revealing themselves who the bloodline is here that is here. It, it'll be a whole tumbling of dominoes and it'll happen in the twinkling of an eye. And I think we're right on the verge of that happening. Yes. Yeah, the gentleman for uh, the NSA that I was telling you formed that team, he said, Michael, you know what's underneath you there? And I said, no, not really. He said, it's the oldest underground base in the world, and it's not ours. And he said, there's huge, like, centers where they get together, like, uh, for large groups, and that's where most of the work happens down there. And they said, it's like 
beautiful Sumerian temples architecture that's down there. And then there's offshoots that are like hallways and there's separate living quarters. Um, not under the whole land too. Like they said, uh, he told me personally that Wright Pedersen Air Force Base is one of the entrances. He said it's in that whole area is underground bases, both under the lake and under the land of Ohio. Them. Them. Yeah, they, uh, you know what happened is actually when I met them, he said, now that they know that I'm one of them, that no one can touch me, is what yes. they said. There is protection available, dudes. Yeah, just, just ask for protection. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Give me a hug. Oh. Mm, <laughs> we'll see, I hugged an Anunnaki. <laughs>